Glory to Jesus Christ. So we're reading the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And this is published by Liberia Editrice Vaticana in, uh, 19, in 20, 2016, 2016. And we're at, uh, on the Creator, paragraph four of part one, Profession of Faith, uh, chapter two, cha rather chapter three, man's response to God, uh, and it's in and a uh, paragraph for the creator on pa found on page 73 you also can get this online at www dot <coughs> usccb that's the united states conference of catholic bishops and uh Dot org and you can get a www.vatican.va uh, in English and, and Catholic culture from Catholic culture you can get a, a, a free ebook a ebook e e of the Catechism of the Catholic Church so let's pray <clears throat> O God the Creator redeem us sanctify us pour out Father the Spirit upon us O Christ, show us yourself, and may we conform to you. We know that you, O Holy Trinity, have created us, and that you have fashioned our spirits uh, in a however pale image of yourself, and that you have created all things from nothing, ultimately. So to you alone be adoration forever and ever. And to all who praise you, to them uh, be share, those, all those who live in your grace, the angels and the saints and those on earth in, in that vast communion of saints, may they share in, may we raise our voices in praise of them also, for they join with us in adoring only you, above all else and may we always make that choice and make that choice real in our lives by the power of your grace amen so this is 279 so 279 to 281 in the beginning god this is from genesis the beginning of genesis in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth so they say where is there is baseball in the in the bible and they said where in the, the big inning so, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, that's Genesis 1, 1. God creates out of, out of nothing. So, in that beautiful, that beautiful poem of Genesis 1, from the, uh, in, uh, uh, scholars say that it's from the, the priestly tradition, oral tradition of, uh, of Torah tradition. Holy Scripture begins with these solemn words. The profession of faith takes them up when it confesses that God, the Father Almighty, is creator of heaven and earth, from the Apostles' Creed, of all things visible and invisible, Nicene Creed. So the Father, often the, the, the image is, or the description, uh, the Father through the Son in the Spirit, all equal and, and, and uh, co-eternal and infinite. We shall speak first of the Creator, then of creation, and finally of the fall into sin from which Christ Jesus, the Son of God, came to raise us up again. Again, the uh, our salvation is, uh, with Christ is the Redeemer with a capital R, because he's true God and true man. But it's a, an act of the Trinity, that act of God. And the same thing as sanctification. Holy Spirit poured out on us. And the Holy Spirit is rightly called the, the Lord and giver of life and the sanctifier, just as it's right to call the Father creator and the Son redeemer. But it's all, there are, it's the action of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 280. Creation is the foundation of all God's saving plans. 
the beginning of the history of salvation that culminates in Christ. Conversely, the mystery of Christ casts conclusive light on the mystery of creation and reveals the end for which, quote, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. From the beginning, God envisioned the glory of the new creation in Christ because, well, he's omniscient, God is omniscient, God is, is infinite, and uh, God is, uh, you know, the eternal thou, and, uh, quote, unquote, dwelling in the eternal thou. Uh, if it's now the capital N. Uh, the, uh, his timelessness, his time-filledness, because he pervades time, uh, Conversely, the mystery of Christ casts conclusive light on the mystery of creation and reveals the end for which in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. From the beginning, God envisioned the glory of the new creation in Christ. See Genesis, not just Genesis 1, 1, but Romans 8, 18 through 23. 281. So, from the readings of the Easter Vigil, of the Latin rite, the celebration of the new creation in Christ begins with the creation account. Likewise, in the Byzantine liturgy, that's the, the Greek slash Slavonic liturgy there, the account of creation always constitutes the first reading of the vigils of the great feasts of the Lord. So, uh, uh, according to ancient witnesses, the instruction of catechumens for baptism followed the same itinerary. And so it says, it's the Egeria. Egeria was <coughs> well, from northern Spain or uh, southwestern, what is now southwestern France, from Gaul or that area there. Uh, <coughs> she was a pilgrim and she left uh, uh, an account of her travels in the Holy Land. So the peregrinatio ad loca santa, a pilgrimage to the holy places. And uh, so that's 46. And also see St. Augustine on the catechization of the, uh, of, of the country people, it's, I think it is. There, uh, three five, Patrologia Latina forty comma two five six. So we'll look at what the Catechism of the Catholic Church, with theological commentary, edited by Archbishop Rino Finiscella, published by in it. In it Italian, I believe. It's published by Liberty and Chichi Vaticana, the Vatican Public Publishing House, but the, the Catechism. And, uh, but in English, it's Our Sunday Visitor from uh, Huntington, Indiana, uh, 2019. And this is a commentary there from uh, Luis F. Ladaria, or Ladaria, uh, Cardinal, I believe. Uh, so, um, on the Creator. So this is page 703, going to ooh, <coughs> 705. Ooh. No. This is 703, just 703. <coughs> The Catechism's text about God, the Creator, begins by quoting Genesis 1-1, the first phrase of sacred scripture. <coughs> Faith in the creation deserves a place of honor by that very fact. Everything that exists, heaven and earth, are works of God, the Creator. All the divine action of the world and the economy of salvation, which will have its final fulfillment in Jesus, begins with this assumption. The creed takes up the same idea from Genesis, but a simple comparison between these two texts will suffice to discover a fundamental difference. 
According to the confession of Christian faith, God, the creator of all, is the Father. Below, in part two of this paragraph four, the paragraph, it's a different use of parag the word paragraph from the ordinary use. <clears throat> there will be reference to the Trinity as such, acting in the work of creation. It is also useful to note that this perspective is already present in these introductory indications. In number 280, the relationship of the creation with Christ is presented in summary. In fact, in two directions, on one hand, the creation is the beginning of the history of salvation. <coughs> Excuse me. It will reach its peak in Christ. We must not think that the creation is a simple neutral background that God puts in place on which to then bring about the salvation of men. According to Genesis 2.7, God creates man with his own hands. According to Genesis 1.26 following, he creates man in his own image and likeness. Other things have meaning in relation to the human being, with whom the work of creation culminates. From the first moment, God is already close to men. This is why the creation culminates in Christ. In creation begins the dialogue between God and man, which is to reach its summit in Jesus. Yet at the same time, we are told that the mystery of Christ is the definitive light for understanding the mystery of creation. Indeed, according to the New Testament, Christ is the mediator in the work of creation, as he was in the work of salvation. So in Christ is the one mediator with the Father, the, the eternal word, uh, in particular, the eternal word now fully incarnate, as a, a human, uh, with a full human nature, with a true human body, now, of course, resurrected and, and quote-unquote, divinized uh, fully, not mixed. This, this isn't a mixing of, uh, you know, add water and stir sort of thing of uh, mixing humanity and divinity. Now, the divinity is distinct, eternal, and the humanity is distinct, you know, from the moment of his conception of the womb of the Virgin Mary, but truly united, one person. So a paradox, not a contradiction. Since God is infinite and internal, it is quite easy for him. This history of salvation will reach its peak in Christ. We must not think that creation is a simple neutral background that God puts in place. God creates man with his own hands. According to one, Genesis one twenty six, that image of the, I always think of, you know, a, a child playing with the mud, making a mud figure. Um, but in his own hands, quote unquote, because God is spirit in this thing. Unless, of course, it's, it's the resurrected Christ who transcends time, can transcend time, if that's that, but because uh, he has you know, fully human, a body, all this stuff. But uh, he creates man in his own image and likeness. Other things have meaning in relation to the human being with whom the work of creation culminates. So we're the culmination of earthly creation. Uh, but we don't act that way. We offer often as if we're the destroyers of creation rather than the culmination of it. It, it the corruptors of creation. Indeed, according to New, the New Testament, Christ is the mediator in the work of creation, as he was in the work of salvation. See First Corinthians eight six, Colossians one fifteen, John one three, John one nineteen, and Hebrews one two. Verse 28 makes evident how the liturgy, and in particular, number 28 that is, the liturgy in particular, the celebration of the Paschal Vigil, sets the creation as the first moment of the history that will culminate in the resurrection of Jesus. So we have that, and we can, we have time to 
look at uh, the Nicene, with the uh, Athanasian Creed, which we'll take from. Well, today maybe I'll take. No, I'll do this. I'll do from the Handbook of Prayers by James Socias from uh, 19, 1992, and this is the 2011 uh, redoing, or, you know, with the new translation of the liturgy. And it's published by Midwest Theological Forum, 1420 Davy Road, Woodridge, Woodridge Illinois. So there it is. And this page, 301. So I don't have that much time today. So we'll go right into it. Whoever wishes to, this is Athanasian Creed, the qui cum quae vult, <coughs> which was not penned by St. Athanasius. But anyway, whoever wishes to be saved must above all keep the Catholic faith. For unless a person keeps this faith whole and entire, he will undoubtedly be lost forever. This is what the Catholic faith teaches. We worship one God in the Trinity and the Trinity in unity. We distinguish among the persons, but we do not divide the substance. For the Father is a distinct person, the Son is a distinct person, and the Holy Spirit is a distinct person. Still the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit have one divinity, equal glory and co-equal majesty. What the Father is, the Son is, and the Holy Spirit is. The Father is uncreated, the Son is uncreated, the Holy Spirit is uncreated. The Father is boundless, the Son is boundless, and the Holy Spirit is boundless. The Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, and the Holy Spirit is eternal. Nevertheless, there are not three eternal beings, but one eternal being. Thus, there are not three uncreated beings, nor three boundless beings, boundless infinite, but one created being and one boundless being. Likewise, the Father is omnipotent, the Son is omnipotent, and the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. <clears throat> Yet there are not three omnipotent beings, but one omnipotent being. Thus, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. But there are not three gods, but one God. The Father is Lord. The Son is Lord, and the Holy Spirit is Lord. There are not three lords, but one Lord. For according to Christian truth, we must profess that each of the persons individually is God. And according to Christian religion, we are forbidden to say that there are three gods or three lords. The Father is not made by anyone, nor created by anyone, nor generated by anyone. The Son is not made nor created, but is generated by the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is not made or created nor generated, but proceeds from the Father and the Son. There is then one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. In this Trinity, there is nothing greater, nothing less than anything else, but all three persons are co-eternal and co-equal with one another. So that, as we have said, we worship complete unity in the Trinity, and the Trinity in unity. This, then, is what one who wishes to be saved must believe about the Trinity. It is also necessary for eternal salvation that one believes steadfastly in the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. The true faith is, we believe and profess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is both God and man. As God, he was begotten of the substance of the Father before time. As man, he was born in time, of the substance of his mother. He is perfect God and he is perfect man, with a rational soul and a human flesh. He is equal to the Father in his divinity, but he is inferior to the Father in his humanity. Though he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. And he is one, not because his divinity was changed into flesh, but because his humanity was assumed to God. He is one, not at all because of a mingling of substances, but because he is one person. As a rational soul and flesh are one man, so God and man are one Christ. He died for our salvation, descended to hell, arose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, 
sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all are to arise with their own bodies, and they are to give an account of their lives. Those who have done good deeds will go into eternal life. Those who have done evil will go into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Everyone must believe it firmly and steadfastly. Otherwise, one cannot be saved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to you, equal Trinity, one Godhead, before all time, now and forever, consubstantial and undivided, distinct in three persons, eternally. To you be glory forever and ever. Amen. And let's pray the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Howard Ernest, give you a wave there. And let's push the finish button.